Hello everybody. I let my phone die, so I now have to ride with my uh, cable plugged in. Beautiful phaser, Kawasaki Ninja. Let's go. Doesn't even help I look away because the camera sees everything. Nice blind spot check. I'm actually surprised someone checked the blind spot. Thank you, buddy. Right, well, let's get out of here. Hello everybody! It is a wonderful, wonderful Thursday afternoon out here in uh, Stellenbosch. That's where I am right now, yeah. And thank you. Oh, I'm just happy to be. Oh, you're gonna be that person today. That's okay. I'd like to go though. Come on, Rose and Joe. People don't like bikers today, I see. It's like everybody's had a bad day. Well, not me, because guess what? I get to be on the bike. <laughs> oh, what a lovely day. I love those running LEDs. I mean, I know it's not new tech, but I still love them. I think they're pretty epic. Day. I'm out here on the bike, I'm enjoying everything. Is that a camera or is somebody just trying to... That's a camera. Ooh, and that would have nailed me proper. Nice work, coppers. Nice work. Very bright yellow though, you can't miss it and it's massive too. Okay, anyway, what was I saying? Lost my train of thought. So, I've delved into the wonderful abyss of YouTube content again. I had myself a bit of an off period where I didn't really have inspiration for the stuff I wanted to bring out to the channel. Um, and then I came across a couple of videos from my favorite guys out there, Fast Eddie himself, Moto Jitsu, uh, Obviously yummy noob, but I mean, this stuff isn't really safety geared, and MC Rider, and, oh man, you know, oh yeah, and how can I forget old Dan Dan the Fireman, although I haven't watched his stuff in a while, guilty, I'm sorry Dan, I'm one of them ghost subscribers you've got there, probably do myself a better job if I actually watch some more of your videos again. Um, but something that really seems to get to me and you know MC Ryder actually commented on it well, I, I recently watched one of his videos where he commented about it but motorcycles and the danger factor oh my goodness so I've got this colleague at work and he's got mates who are like obsessed with high-speed motorcycling. Like, if they're not doing 299, then there, there's no point in riding a motorcycle. And um, he was telling me this week that actually a whole bunch of them got arrested because they were out after curfew on the bikes, and they were more than likely doing a meetup to go street racing. Uh, but I mean, he always tells me these wonderful stories about how somebody he knows just wrote off his R1 or his S1000RR. Or and I'm just like, guys, please stop being such irresponsible bikers. If you want to go fast like that, 
go on a track. If you need the adrenaline rush of going as fast as you possibly can, if you want to go out racing, please just keep it on the track because you're just being a menace to other people around you. And sure, you might be racing after 12 o'clock at night, but then it's dark. You shouldn't be racing in uncontrollable conditions. Anyways, so quite often I have a conversation with people around me that tells me, you know, aren't you scared to ride a motorcycle, you know? Isn't it dangerous being on two wheels, not being able to balance? And, oh, I could never ride a motorcycle because if I crash, you know, I don't, I don't have a cage. Oh, I know somebody that died on a motorcycle, or I have a cousin or an uncle or somebody that died on a motorcycle in a motorcycle accident. And to be honest, I think we've got it all wrong. Um, motorcycles are not the thing that's dangerous. It's untrained and unskilled and unwilling riders who make motorcycles dangerous. Like, yes, a motorcycle is the kind of vehicle that you can get for seriously cheap by comparison to what you could for a car. And it can go astronomically fast by comparison to equally sized cars. I mean, this 1.2 liter motorcycle, I've gotten up to 222 kilometers an hour before I close the taps. My 1.4 liter Ford Figo couldn't get to 160 on the highway without the assistance of a downhill. It's just absolutely impossible. And that's simply because these little things that, that they have, two wheels, really are just insanely powerful. And it's great, like I'm all for understanding that a motorcycle is this exciting thing to ride, it's freeing to ride. But going out of the pure intention to speed is just, oh, not on the public streets, man. Anyways, so my whole argument about being on a motorcycle is that they actually aren't as dangerous as what people see them to be. You see, if you are a smart rider, as Dan Dan the Fireman says, you know, if you practice good situational awareness, you go for training, you do practices, track days, you develop your skills, that makes you a good rider. I, I can't remember offhand the smart rider acronyms, but those are principles that I've learned to ride by, and it's something I practice every day when I'm out on the road. Look far ahead, scan ahead, be situationally aware look at what's coming on, position yourself safely. Things that Moto Jitsu teaches with his Moto Jitsu drills in the parking lot, I mean you guys know I go out and practice as often as I possibly can. Um, look, I've been quite neglecting of it the past couple of days, I mean the price of petrol is getting ridiculously expensive, but I don't start my day on the bike without warming up to the bike on the street. I do a couple of emergency stops, some, some weaves, I get back into the feel of the bike, I test out the tires. I ride as safely as I possibly can. I need to speed up a little. And that's just something that I want to make people aware of, is that as much as, yes, a lot of people die on motorcycles when they go through motorcycle accidents, you've probably found that about 90% of the time those people were not paying enough attention to the things that are around them. They're not situationally aware. They look at the first car in front of them and that's it. They lane split doing like 40 kilometers faster than what the other guys in the traffic are. And it's absolutely absurd. Now, I'm vlogging today, so I've reduced my pace way down. I'd normally be doing about 100 on this stretch of road, sometimes a little bit more. But you have to be adaptive with how you ride. You can't just get on a bike and go past that car ahead of me doing 160 k's an hour with only a meter of space between me 
really does two things. Uh, one of them Fast Eddie doesn't really cover on is it actually tells the driver that you're approaching, that you're planning to pass, which side of the road you plan on passing them. I mean, if I come and position myself here, a guy's likely not going to move out of my way if he see me, because he thinks that I'm going to go around and on the left, even though in South Africa overtaking on the left is actually illegal. A lot of motorcycles out here give us that bad reputation because they're always just leaving through the traffic. And don't get me wrong, it's super fun to move through the traffic. But, you know, that there's a time and a place. I mean, if a guy doesn't move out your way for a long period of time, by all means, you can pass him on the left of you. But if you can't, stay on the right. Keep right, pass him. I mean, what? Keep left, pass right. Ooh, I'm jumbling myself up. Now, obviously, this is a lot of context to the South African roads. If you're in a country where the rules are keep right, pass left, then you sort of need to observe that kind of behavior. Bottom line is you have to be a very, very responsible and adaptive driver. I think that guy got fine. Hey, dude. And yeah, you know, like, I just, I'm tired of hearing people in the general population how dangerous they think motorcycles are. Because the reality is, is just as much as everybody knows a rider that's passed away, I mean, before I even rode a bike, I knew somebody that passed away. In fact, he had the same name as me. It's kind of sad. But just because I know people that have passed away on motorcycles doesn't make the motorcycle itself inherently dangerous. Yes, there is a much higher fatality risk, but that doesn't mean that the motorcycle itself is dangerous. I can tell you now, like, of all my friends that I know who have cars, more of them have had car accidents in a ratio of car accidents to friends than bikers who have had biker accidents that are friends, you know? And I think that is something essential in the world that we live in, is that people don't realize that just because there's a cage around you doesn't make it inherently safe. In fact, I think car drivers are just far too complacent. I mean, lots of them drive around texting on their cell phones, and I mean, because you have this false sense of security, you know, if something happens to you, you've got airbags and ABS and seat belts. And we don't have that on a bike. When you get on a bike, you're supposed to be making the conscious decision that I am taking a responsibility for my own safety. And I mean, sure, I've had my fair share of bike accidents. I've had a couple drops in the street. and. By all means, I'm super embarrassed to have had them because when I was riding beyond my ability, I mean, my first drop was actually one of my saddest because i just gotten new tires on the bike. I had no intentions of riding fast and my back wheel slipped on one of these painted white lines and I dropped the bike there and then and this was before I actually had full gear. This was like the decider for me, like full gear is important. I mean, I've been like, yeah, next month I'll go buy pants, but then it's like 2,400 Rand for a pair of textiles. And you're like, mm, you know, I don't know if I can justify that expense this month. So you kind of push it back to the next. Um, oh, now, now this was really unfair of you, bro. That was really uncool, dude. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, and like I just kept pushing back the fact that I had, I needed to buy pants, and I didn't, and I didn't, and I did it, and eventually, when I dropped my motorcycle, I was like, dude, you better ride with all the gear all the time. Like there is just no excuse for it. As expensive as the gear might be. A uh, 2,400 Rand pair of pants is a lot less painful than limping around the office for four days and people telling you that you're walking like a 
like a special of some sort because you literally cannot walk your your joints have like not allowed it and in fact for about six months after I had the drop my leg would actually cramp up while I was on the bike that like so much so that I would have to stand up to like get it to uncramp to unlock out of the position it was in it was really awful and that was a low speed drop at like 20 k's an hour oh. and since then I've been like a hard at that preacher like I absolutely think if you're not wearing all the gear all the time then you really shouldn't be spending your time on a motorcycle my opinion guys I, I I'm not going to look down on you for not wearing your gear whether you ride in uh, riding jeans or shorts and pluckies I, I can't condemn you as a biker but really man you got to think twice about what you're doing and you know fast eddie said something on his channel is that you know the dumb shit bikers say is that oh i don't plan on crashing that's why i don't wear full gear you should always be dressed for the slide and not the ride crazy things happen that you don't expect when you're out on the road and just being prepared for it is a good step in the right direction and if you are like a super friendly rider and you greet people then more than likely cages are going to start noticing us and they'll make way for us instead of like that taxi that I just had to like you know cut me off um, I really I just I get really upset when people say yeah bikes are dangerous because they're not you have to make conscious decisions about whether or not you're going to take that chance whether you're going to drive like an arsehole today or drive conservatively you know, this guy that's given me a gap, if I'm going to pass him or not. Thank you very much, buddy. Have a wonderful day. Um, and for me, that, that is the big thing that makes a good biker is, if you're a friendly biker and you don't get super road ragey and whatever, and you just go out there and ride, and ride respectively and conservatively, then that's the difference that you're going to be making. And honestly, the less bikers portray a negative image of us, the more people will be like, you know what, I want to get a bike. I want to be like that guy. You know, he's so cool, he looks calm, he looks free. That's the kind of image you want to portray of motorcyclists. You don't want to be this boring, aggressive guy that when you fly past someone, you go punch their mirrors in or stick your arm through the window and break their indicator that lever off because they never use it you really have to be the change you wish to see in the world if you want to get more people on the motorcycle because really that's the goal is let's get people off of these cages and let's give them a, a new sense of freedom a, a sense of belonging I mean one thing that's incredible about being a biker is everywhere you go another biker wants to greet you if you're in the cage it's just like oh you're just another insignificant moron on the road you suck how boring is that you know being part of of the motorcycling community because that's really what we are i mean we don't even have to know each other but we will treat you as if you're you're a brother you know you have a breakdown we will stop for you if we're not in a hurry because we've got errands to run or whatever but we 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 take care of our own we know what it's like to be a biker and i i promise you man it is the most freeing sensation in the world if you do one thing like if you want to add one thing onto your bucket list make it getting a bike license getting on there and going out for a long ride out on the twisties or oh i mean not everybody is fortunate enough like i am to have these wonderful twisty roads but to go out there for a long haul run and just experience the freedom that you have on a motorcycle. I mean, I was watching a, a Brian 636 video the other day and, um, oh, I mean, okay, it's quite an old video, but it was him showing off his GTO and like he literally showed the GoPro footage from inside his, his car and if you compare the GoPro footage from inside his car 
to the GoPro footage from him doing his stunt rides, you know, the amount that you get to see when you're on a bike is just insane. When you're sitting inside the cage, 90% of your vision is just obscured by this metal box around you. And you just don't get that sense of freedom inside a cage, even if you've got a convertible. I mean, you know what, in fact, maybe a convertible is one step up from being a motorcyclist because you at least have the wind blowing over you and you're not stuck inside this helmet. But, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to ride without a helmet, you know? Like I said, the risk factor is too high because I'm exposed, I'm not inside a cage, you know? But you just gotta, you gotta get out there and experience motorcycling and, and understand just how freeing this sensation is. The ability to not have to sit uh, behind a line of cars at a traffic light and just cruise right through. I mean, you don't have to fly through when you're lane splitting, which is probably why in a lot of states in the US it's still illegal to lane split. Correct me if I'm wrong, any of the state's viewers, but I'm pretty sure there's still more than half of the states it's still illegal to lane split. Um, but it's just to get through this, to not have to sit through all this queuing traffic because, you know, you've got a vehicle with a smaller profile. It's just, it's fantastic, it's freeing, it's less frustrating. My original reasoning for buying a motorcycle was that I can't deal with the claustrophobia of sitting in traffic, so having the ability to just get past the traffic, oh my, oh my, that is, that is golden. And yes, it comes with its inherent risks, like I said. There are a lot of motorcycle deaths, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that people haven't died on motorcycles, I'm simply saying it's entirely up to the rider. The rider determines the danger factor. If you drive like an asshole, chances are you will kill yourself on a motorcycle. If you ride responsibly and continuously improve yourself, then you change the game. I mean, geez, if track days were more affordable, I would be doing track days every weekend instead of once in my entire motorcycling history. But, you know, it's, it's getting out there and just living on a motorcycle and having, like, my fiancé rides with me on, like, group rides and stuff. In fact, we, oh, we went to a group ride a couple of weeks ago. The first time she, we, we did something, it was a little small. It's something that she gets to experience with me and, oh man, the fact that she does it is just absolutely golden, especially because she's got this insane psychological fear of riding the motorbike. But just to be able to go out there and experience this world around us is just, it's so much more freeing than being stuck inside a cage. I, I, I know I feel like a bit of a broken record, but I, I honestly, I don't know what else, apart from being able to fly a freaking microlight, what else would feel this free? I mean, sure. And the thing is, motorcycles are beautifully, beautifully powerful. They are fast, they accelerate quickly. So if you've got that need for speed factor about you, you can still get it without needing to be hopelessly reckless. But I think that's kind of subjective too, because reckless riders, they're, they're kind of in their space of, no, I'm not being reckless because I feel like I'm in control. Um, oh, don't anybody jump out of this bus now. Oh. But we just, we gotta do more, man. We gotta, we gotta be more involved so again guys like I say I mean you, you gotta you gotta really look out for the risk factors as a motorcyclist I mean you have to identify the hazards you have to be situationally aware but if you get all those things in place man you've got a 
you've got a recipe for success there and you know you if you mitigate the risk factors when you're on the bike you change things you change the game and that's what it's all about it really is about making the most out of your bike time being a responsible motorcyclist being a positive example for for kids that want to get into the motorcycling space for for people who've never ridden a motorbike before that would love to do it you have to be a responsible rider to show them that we're not just a bunch of crazy speed freaks with no consideration for other motorists and I, I mean I think that that's the bottom line is, is, is I think that's the crux of what I wanted to put in this video is it doesn't matter how like how labeled we are as motorcyclists you simply have to be the change and then motorcycles will not be dangerous anymore I just want more people on motorcycles I mean if you haven't picked that up by now then I, I don't know I, I just want to see more people get onto bikes I want to see more people involved in the motorcycling world I mean they really are useful transportation vehicles for the daily runner sure you might need to shuttle your kids to school or whatever I mean we don't have a great public transport infrastructure in South Africa like a lot of the other countries do like school buses and stuff uh, I mean we do have some private school transport and stuff but I reckon like if everybody just had to get on a motorcycle and experience it and share that with the people that they love their family and if everyone rides then people will be more conscious of the motorcyclist you know and the more conscious they are of us the safer it becomes because you'll have less people jumping through stop signs and cutting through lanes when there's a motorcycle approaching because why well, oh there's a motorcyclist let me just back off anyways guys I mean I know I've done my little bit of a rant and you know it's it's quite frustrating for me to be ranty with you guys but I really felt like this video needed to be made I really felt like it was a message I needed to share and I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna have a ton of comments about it and criticisms and whatever so I mean if you do you know if you have an opinion please share it I want I hope that something I've said resonates with you well, if you like this video why don't you give it a thumbs up uh, subscribe to the channel and ring that little notifications bell I think it will be that side I still haven't figured this damn thing out so that you don't miss any of our future videos. My name is Matt and I make motorcycle related content for you to enjoy. Until next time, ride safe.